Okay, so now I'm going to move on to some more advanced techniques, mainly involving the back of the wing right here. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. So what I want to do is I want to have the majority of this shell right here uh, extruded inward based on the outline that we've already established here, maybe adding to it a little bit. That'll make sense in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go down to Vox Extrude is what I need. So what this does is it will extrude the um, the vertices in the uh, based on a selection area. So I want to extrude this inward, so that's what the offset is, and if it's negative then it'll extrude into the model rather than out of the model. And let's make our selection. Now the particular stroke mode I'm going to use for this is going to be the very last one here, the 3D closed spline. And the reason I want to do that instead of just the regular closed spline is, watch this. If I make a selection with the closed spline and I hit enter, it works just fine. But what's happening is that this selection is based partially off of your viewing angle. So the, the, um, the problem with this is that if I select a really large area that goes very far around a curved object like this, like so, if I'm looking at it wrong, like say this, hit enter, you'll see that's not nearly what I wanted to select because, but based on the viewing angle, you'll see these two green lines match up perfectly. Whereas in 3D, they don't. So if I clear the selection, that's why we have the 3D closed spline. The 3D closed spline doesn't have this problem, but it's only available for certain tools like Vox Extrude or Vox Layer. It doesn't work with standard sculpting tools like Extrude or Build. So bearing that in mind, let's begin. So I'll start up here at the corner, about that far in. And I'm also going to hover over this little box and I'm going to uncheck B splines. And here's what that does. You see how the line, it's a little hard to see right now, doesn't actually pass through any of the points, rather it's averaging out a curve between them? That's a B spline. If I turn B splines off, you'll see the line must pass through every single point. That's closer to the behavior we want, so we're going to make sure that's the case. All right, so I'll start here. Okay, now this is where it's going to get tricky because I need to be able, because I need to go down to some areas that I can't see from the top here. So I'm going to shift my view. I'm going to hit 8, which will look at it from the back. And then I can start to follow this once again. And I'll hit escape to stop drawing points. So now we've got our shape mostly there, but it's it's all curvy, so need to fix that. So I can right click on certain points to make them sharp angles. Okay, there's one area right here. If I just click on that, it'll add another point, and I want to be able to see most of my uh, most of my line here. See how that does. Okay. So now that we have this, I can hit enter, and you'll see it selected everything perfectly even though we didn't have the optimal viewing angle for it. So now that I have that selection, I can apply my 
box extrusion. Now watch what happens to wing back right here. Okay, first thing, that is not nearly deep enough. So I'll make this maybe negative 3.5 and I'll decrease the smoothing degree. And you'll see that uh, we have um, a bit more of a well-defined shape. Um, okay, let's keep working on this. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to add kind of a shell around this. Kind of want it to look like a, an armadillo shell, so kind of a layered, a layered pattern going on here. The way I'll do it is I'll use a Vox layer tool. So if I grab this Vox, actually, before we do that even, I need to change this back into a voxel object. As you see right here, using the vox extrude, changed it to a surface object. I'll click the little S here. And for the required polygon count, I usually like to go a little bit higher than what it suggests. So I'll go 400,000. Hit OK. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to use what's known as a vox layer. So, I'm going to go down here to Vox Layer. And what this will do is it'll duplicate the surface and then extrude it outwards a little bit. So I'll make it a little bit thicker than what it is right now. And once again, using the 3D spline. and I'll hit apply. And as you can see what it does is it makes this little this little layering right here. Actually 2.2 might have been a bit too thick. I'll bring it back down to 1.7. There we go. That should be good. And if I hide the wing back, you'll see that this is just a shell. So what we can do with it now is if I look at it from the top, I can grab my pose tool. Okay. So using the line, if I just grab this and move it, I can have it so it intersects with the outermost portion of the shell. I'll do the same thing on the bottom. So I want this to um, to go outward to the right a little bit. So I'll grab my pose tool. Oh, the grid's getting us again. And we're going to need a few copies of this. So I can click this little two piece of paper icon down here, duplicate it, and then I can move it. Oh, and now you're seeing right here, see how the overlap sort of switches sides? So that's something that I've got to think about. So I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to make that appropriate change over here. So if I select this whole area with the pose tool, once again I'll check for linear falloff. I only want to thicken one side of this. So then what I'll do is I'll check this box right here, use freeform. Then what I need to do is I need to move this lattice here until it properly encompasses my selection area. 
Okay, we got that. So what I can do now is grab these two points right here. And I can make that a bit thicker. And I can make the other side a bit narrower. There we go. So now one side is thicker than the other so that we shouldn't get that layering problem anymore. Tiny bit thinner, I'll make it. All right, now real quick, I'm just gonna speed through doing the same thing to the other side. Okay, so now that that's done, let's try this again. And I'll probably just leave that part empty. Real quick, I'm going to jump to the uh, the front here to this blade portion. And to make sure it's actually sharp on one side, I'm going to just use my cutoff tool like we've been doing. All right, let's, now that that's done, I'm gonna jump back here to the uh, back again. And if I look back at the, uh, the reference, so the back of my shell here has uh, this extrusion on it as well. Not sure exactly what you'd call that, but I'm gonna go ahead and make that right now. Before we do that though, I'm gonna parent these uh, properly. I'm not gonna merge them all because I want them to all be distinct. So I'll just change parent to wing back and do that for all of these real quick.